You see, my question is this. Can an authentic prophet, authentic prophet of God, find himself while in the exercise of his ministry be distracted by the devil to give a divination? It's true that the Apostle Peter didn't prophesy. But in Matthew 16, when he said to Jesus, You will not die, Jesus said behind me, Satan, you're causing a scandal. But we know that this is a true servant of God. Can a genuine prophet of God be in the exercise of his ministry, be distracted for even a few seconds, and be inspired by the devil to give a divination? If you allow me a question, too, that's related to his question earlier in the story of Balaam, I noticed something. He came up with the diviner position. Now, in order to hear God, he says he has to change position. Doesn't spiritual positioning make it possible to hear either God or the enemy? In fact, your position, your spiritual position, will enable you to hear. And this position is marked first and foremost by your state of heart. What do you want? What do you seek? What do you seek in the instant when someone then give me back the, the image of the prior or even the sleeper? But the prior, the prior, the prior with the three heavens. So we have someone who is praying. You see the flesh. We have the beam, the beam that leaves the prior and stops at the first heaven. So this is the level of revelation of the flesh. Jesus said to Peter, it's not the flesh. It's not the flesh that has given you this revelation. So the flesh gives certain revelations. Why did I tell you earlier that the spirit of divination can also rely on the revelations of the flesh? What are the revelations of the flesh? They are revelations of hidden things based on logical deduction due to experience and a great sense of observation. So there are people who develop this prophetic spirit, which is a spirit of divination. Sorry, it's not prophecy. Linked to their great sense of observation. Okay, they know that generally, you can generally know that in a crowd like that, there's definitely someone, a woman with a stomach problem, so I see a lady on my left. The probability that there's someone there with a tummy ache is very high. And there are things, so it's not that they hear, but it's that they have enough experience of the things of the flesh. And that allows them to be able to hear and deduce certain things. These are revelations that come from the flesh and divination. The spirit of divination can make use of them. And in at time, they can come closer to what God wants to do. But why would anyone take them? Because their heart is corrupt. Because they want to amaze the crowd. They want to please people. And I assure you, they can be extremely precise. The Bible says you can tell a prophet by his fruit. And what's the fruit? It's his love. It's his patience. It's his gentleness. It's the character of God that will be refuted in him. Someone who is profoundly righteous, who loves God. He's not going to lie to people. He's not going to want to do things to amaze them. So when you want to give, you want to receive prophecy. When you want to become a true prophet, you want to become a true prophet. Be careful not to be seduced by your flesh. So indeed, distraction can bring you so much you want to please people, so much you want to tell people what they want to hear. Amen, amen. Then the Lord will say this. I forget to note this reference there. What are the prophecies that come from their heart? Well, I'll look up the difference later. I'm a bit behind the times. So the Bible talks about these prophets who prophesy according to their heart, according to their thoughts. The second line you'll see on the other screen is the third line, the red beam. This is the state of the soul, the state of mind. Your soul will give you access to the second heaven. This is the heaven where the devil, the demons sit. And it's here that we're going to refer to divination, where it's not experience that's involved, but prediction and divination, where we hear voices, we we hear directions, we hear the Spirit. But here it's really linked to our states of mind, our emotional states, etc. And here too, the prophet has to be very careful. That's why he says to sort out Thessalonians chapter 5 from verse 20 onwards, to retain what is good, to retain what is good. The Apostle Paul, sorry, the Apostle Peter at one point prophesied by the Spirit, they say, You are Christ, the Son of the living God, and then Jesus will say to him that it is not the flesh and blood that gave you these revelations, but it is my Father who is in heaven. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, Hebrews 4, 12, the Bible says, The Word of God, how we come to see victory as a prophet if you want to become, you want to exercise a prophetic ministry without mixing between the whole. The Bible says, the word of God is powerful, then a double-edged sword to separate soul and spirit, joint and marrow. Amen. Joint and marrow refers to the revelations of the flesh. 
Soul and spirit refers to the point of contact between the flesh, sorry, between the soul and the spirit. And what does that Qu'est la Bible, la parole de Dieu et les premières prophéties de Dieu, si tu veux profiter par l'esprit, les premières it's the Bible, the Word of God, and the first prophecies of God, if you want to prophesy by the Spirit. The first prophecies, if you want to sort it out, as you say a man of God has to focus on the Holy Scriptures. When you see Jesus, he overcame Satan's revelations by what is written. Satan came to tempt him. Satan spoke to him. He fasted. He prayed for forty days. And that's when we can often let ourselves be seduced. But Satan came to him in the desert, and Satan tempted him. But Jesus overcame the devil by the written word. He was hungry, that is to say, Satan tested his flesh, revelation through the flesh. If you are a son of God, turn stone into peace. I said man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He took the writings and separated joint and marrow. Second temptation, throw yourself from the tower. The angels will take you, the ego, to throw you so that the people in the crowd there can see what a great man of God. It is the ego. Jesus said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Sometimes you're out there crusading, you want to do things, so people say you're dangerous, man. That's the ego. God said you'll do this. You, you start telling them. So they say, what a prophet, what a prophet, that's it. And I really say this to my brothers in the prophetic ministry, you must let the sword of the word circumcise these different things. So even if all Christian received the Holy Ghost, you have to learn to sort things out. You have to work on yourself through the Holy Scriptures. It's not revelations that will help you discern revelations. It's what's written. Jesus said when Satan tempted him, he didn't say, I receive too. He said, it is written, Alleluia. Satan tempted him. He didn't say, I too, I receive, that I do not have to jump. He says, no, 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 it is written. Satan said, bow down to me. He says, no, 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 no. It's written and three times it's written. He didn't say, I receive, I see, I felt, my daughter, my son, the Bible. Prophecy begins with the holy book. Jesus' life was guided by the writings. The Bible says Jesus said this because it was written. He did this because it was written. He put this on because it was written. The true prophetic ministry which will become a ministry of the Spirit is a ministry where we have enormously and constantly read the Word of God. Bless you all. Amen. This is where we make the difference between divination and prophecy.